MTA Regional Bus Operations is the surface transit division of the Metropolitan Transportation Authority It was created in 2008 to consolidate all bus operations in New York City operated by the MTA. As of February 2018, MTA Regional Bus Operations runs 234 local routes, 71 express routes, and 18 select bus service routes. Its fleet of 5,725 buses is the largest municipal bus fleet in the United States. The division comprises two brands, MTA Bus and MTA New York City Bus. While MTA Bus is an amalgamation of former private companies' routes, MTA New York City Bus is composed of public routes that were taken over by the city before 2008. The MTA also operates paratransit services and formerly operated Long Island Bus. As of 2018, MTA Regional Bus Operations budgetary burden for expenditures was $773 million. <laughs> Brands and service area Regional bus operations is currently only used in official documentation, and not publicly as a brand. The current public brands are listed below. MTA New York City Bus, most routes within the City of New York, operated by the New York City Transit Authority and subsidiary Manhattan and Bronx Surface Transit Operating Authority. MTA Bus, service previously administered by the New York City Department of Transportation and operated by seven companies at the time of takeover, concentrated in Queens, with some routes in the Bronx and Brooklyn, and most express service from Brooklyn, Queens and the Bronx to Manhattan. The seven former companies were, Command Bus Company, Inc., Green Bus Lines, Inc., Jamaica Buses, Inc., Liberty Lines Express, Inc., New York Bus Service, Inc., Queens Surface Corp., and Tribura Coach Corp. The most common scheme is a straight blue stripe across the sides of the bus against a white base, with no colors on the front or back, and black window trim. From 1977 until late 2007 and still present on much of the fleet, the livery was a full all-around stripe with a black rear, and until late 2010 and still present on buses repainted during this time, the scheme was a stripe with a blank rear. Buses operated in select bus service bus rapid transit service are wrapped with a light blue and white wrap below the windows. In spring 2016, a new livery was introduced based on navy blue, light blue, and yellow, with a mostly blue front and sides, a light blue and yellow wave, and a yellow back. This new livery will gradually replace the blue stripe on a white base livery. Currently, many RBO's operational changes have been at the management level, with the creation of a unified command center and consolidation of management for all bus operations, with the aim of reducing redundancies in the agency. Other changes have included eliminating the MTA bus call center, folding it into that of MTA New York City Transit, and the unification of the fare policy for all of the MTA's services. History The history of the MTA's bus operations generally follows the history of the New York City Transit Authority, also known as MTA New York City Transit NYCT, which was created on June 15, 1953 by the State of New York to take over operations then operated by the New York City Board of Transportation. In 1962 the state established the Manhattan and Bronx Surface Transit Operating Authority as a subsidiary of NYCT to take over operations then operated by two private companies, Fifth Avenue Coach Lines, Inc. and Surface Transit, Inc. Both NYCT and Mabstoa operate service pursuant to a lease agreement with the City of New York. Topic MTA New York City Bus City involvement with surface transit in the city began in September 1919, when Mayor John Francis Hyland, through the New York City Department of Plant and Structures (DPNS), organized private entrepreneurs to operate emergency buses to replace four abandoned storage battery streetcar lines, the Madison Street Line, Spring and Delancey Streets Line, Avenue C Line, and Sixth Avenue Ferry Line. 
Many routes were soon added, replacing lines such as the Brooklyn and North River Line trolleys and Queens Bus Lines buses, and the DP&S also began operating trolleys in Staten Island to replace the Staten Island Midland Railways system. Another city acquisition was the Bridge Operating Company, which ran the Williamsburg Bridge local trolley, acquired in 1921 by the DP&S. Unlike the other lines, this one remained city operated, and was replaced by the B 39 bus route on December 5, 1948, by then transferred to the New York City Board of Transportation. With the city takeover of the Brooklyn Manhattan Transit Corporation's surface subsidiary, the Brooklyn and Queens Transit Corporation, on June 2, 1940, the city gained a large network of trolley and bus lines, covering all of Brooklyn and portions of Queens. On February 23, 1947, the Board of Transportation took over the Staten Island bus network of the Isle Transportation Company. Further acquisitions were made on March 30, 1947, with the North Shore Bus Company in Queens, and September 24, 1948, with the East Side Omnibus Corporation and Comprehensive Omnibus Corporation in Manhattan. The final Brooklyn trolleys were the Church Avenue Line and McDonald Avenue Line, discontinued on October 31, 1956, though the privately operated by the Queensborough Bridge Railway Queensborough Bridge local remained until 1957. Thus, in the late 1950s, the city operated all local service in Staten Island and Brooklyn, about half the local service in Queens, and several routes in Manhattan. Several private companies operated buses in Queens, and the Avenue B and East Broadway Transit Company operated a small Manhattan system, but by far the largest system was the Fifth Avenue Coach Company and Surface Transit, which operated almost all Manhattan routes and all Bronx routes, plus two into Queens 15 Fifth Avenue, Jackson Heights and TB Tribura Bridge and one within Queens 16 Elmhurst Crosstown. After a strike in 1962, the city condemned the assets of the bus companies. To facilitate the anticipated sale of the bus service back to private ownership, a new agency, the Manhattan and Bronx Surface Transit Operating Authority Mabstoa, was formed as a subsidiary of the New York City Transit Authority to operate the former Fifth Avenue Coach Lines, Inc. and Surface Transit, Inc. routes under lease from the city. The final acquisition was in 1980, when Mabstoa took over operations of the Avenue B and East Broadway Transit Co. Inc.'s routes, using Mabstower equipment with Avenue B Red Route Roll Signs NYCTA acquired the 13 Grumman F Flexibles that had been assigned to Avenue B and placed them in NYCTA service, however, in late 1981 the MTA decided to merge the New York City Transit Authority's Surface Division aka NYCTA Civil Service with the Manhattan and Bronx Surface Transit Operating Authority aka MABSTOA Non-Civil Service into one single entity using the MTA, New York City Transit Authority, or MTA, New York City Bus Moniker instead of the former. Public takeover of the remaining Queens buses, as well as most express routes, was implemented in 2005 and 2006 when the city purchased the assets of seven private bus companies, and entered into an agreement with the new MTA bus company for their operation and funding. In 2008, the bus operations of New York City Transit and MTA Bus Company as well as the now former Long Island Bus Division were merged into a new regional operation, MTA Regional Bus Operations. The New York City bus brand continues to be used, however, it and the MTA bus brand are being phased out with the introduction of a new blue and yellow livery. The first two buses with the new livery for New York City Transit service were delivered in fall 2016. MTA bus had its first 75 examples delivered in spring and summer 2016. Even with the new livery, New York City Transit Authority, Manhattan and Bronx Surface Transit Operating Authority, and MTA Bus Company continue to be the legal entities operating the services. MTA Bus MTA Bus Company was established in late 2004 to operate bus services resulting from the city's takeover of the privately operated bus route operations previously administered and subsidized by the NYC DOT. The routes were taken over on a staggered schedule, beginning with the former Liberty Lines Express bus routes on January 3, 2005, Queens Surface Corporation bus routes on February 27, 2005, New York Bus Service bus routes on July 1, 2005, Command 
Bus Company bus routes on December 5, 2005, Green Bus Lines bus routes on January 9, 2006, and Jamaica Buses bus routes on January 30, 2006. Tribera Coach Corporation, the final remaining company, ceased operating on February 20, 2006. Currently, the only NYCDOT subsidized lines not consolidated into MTA Bus are those run by Academy Bus and formerly by Atlantic Express until their bankruptcy in 2013. Academy Bus previously operated those routes and others until 2001, when Atlantic Express and NYCT took them over. Although the X-23, and X-24 routes were absorbed by Atlantic Express, the X-17J, X-21, X-22, and X-30 routes were absorbed by the New York City Transit Authority. NYCT discontinued service on the X-21 months after the takeover. Recently, NYS Assemblyman Lou Tobacco and NYS Senator Andrew Lanza, along with U.S. Congressman Michael E. McMahon and NYC Councilman Vincent Ignizio and James Oddo have asked the MTA to look into the possible consolidation of the remainder of the NYC DOT routes. In Brooklyn, a company called Private Transportation operates the B110 route, this is franchised but not subsidized by NYC DOT. Atlantic Express also ran the AE7 Express route from the Tottenville and Travis neighborhoods of Staten Island in the same manner as the private transportation B110 local route. Citing low ridership and increased costs, Atlantic Express canceled the AE7 service on December 31, 2010. Councilman Ignizio and Oddo as well as Congressman Michael G. Grimm have called on the MTA to revamp that route also. Topic. Merger The current system came into being in the mid-2000s following the MTA's assumption, through its subsidiary MTA Bus Company MTABC, of services previously operated by private carriers under operating authority agreements administered by the New York City Department of Transportation, the successor to the New York City Bureau of Franchises. MTABC operates service pursuant to an agreement with the City of New York under which all expenses of MTABC, less operating revenues, are reimbursed. This brought almost all bus transportation in New York City under its control. After the bus mergers were completed in 2006, the MTA then moved to streamline its operations through consolidation of management function. To that effect, RBO was officially created in May 2008, with the president of what was then MTA New York City Transit's Department of Buses, Joseph J. Smith, named to lead the consolidated bus operations. MTA Regional Bus also included the MTA Long Island Bus Division until December 2011, when its services were transferred to the private operator Veolia Transport. In 2008, the bus operations of MTA Bus Company and New York City Transit, as well as the now former Long Island Bus Division, were merged into a new regional operation, MTA Regional Bus Operations. The MTA Bus brand continues to be used. This brand, and the New York City bus brand, was removed from buses delivered from 2016 on, and the blue stripe livery was replaced with a new blue and yellow livery. The first order with the new livery, 75 articulated buses for MTA bus, were delivered in spring and summer 2016, until December 31, 2011. MTA regional bus operations also operated Nassau County's bus and paratransit service, formerly known as Long Island Bus. This service was operated by the MTA under an agreement with Nassau County, who owned its facilities and equipment. In 2011, the MTA asked Nassau County to provide more funding for Long Island Bus than they were at the time. The county refused to provide additional funding, and the MTA voted to end operation of the system at the end of 2011. The county then decided to hire Veolia Transport, now Transdev, a private transportation company, to operate the system in place of the MTA beginning in 2012. The system was then rebranded, Nassau Intercounty Express. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Operations. MTA regional bus routes are spread out across New York City. However, some bus routes may also operate to areas beyond city limits. The Q5 and Q85 routes cross the Nassau County border to go to the Green Acres Mall in Valley Stream. 
The Q2 and Q110 routes leave Queens as they run along Hempstead Turnpike and onto the Cross Island Parkway, and Belmont Racetrack in Elmont, where they re-enter the city. The Q46 local and QM6 express buses run along Lakeville Road in Lake Success, Nassau County upon entering Long Island Jewish Medical Center and North Shore Towers. The Q113 and Q114 cross into Nassau County between Southeast Queens and Far Rockaway. During peak hours, select Q111 buses run to Cedarhurst in Nassau County. The BX-16 route runs into Westchester County for two blocks in Mount Vernon. The BX-7 and BX-10 buses both make their last stops at the Bronx-Westchester border. BXM3 express buses leave the city as they operate to Getty Square in Yonkers. The S89 is the only route to have a stop outside state borders, terminating at the 34th Street Hudson Bergen Light Rail Station in Bayonne, New Jersey. Some Staten Island Express routes run via New Jersey, but do not stop in the state. Local bus routes are labeled with a number and a prefix identifying the primary borough of operation B for Brooklyn, BX for the Bronx, M for Manhattan, Q for Queens, and S for Staten Island. Express bus routes to Manhattan generally use a two letter prefix with an M at the end, i.e., an express route from Brooklyn is prefixed BM, from the Bronx, BXM, from Queens, QM, and from Staten Island, SIM. Exceptions to this rule are seven Brooklyn and Queens express routes operated by New York City Transit, which use an X prefix. Lettered suffixes can be used to designate branches or variants. The two-letter prefixed express system BM, BXM and QM was previously used by the former private carriers. As of 2018, MTA Regional Bus Operations budgetary burden for expenditures was $773 million, which it supports through the collection of taxes and fees. Topic. Local and limited stop service Local and limited stop buses provide service within a single borough, or in some cases across two. While local buses make all stops along a route, limited stop buses only make stops at busy transfer points, points of interest, and heavily used roadways. Limited stop service was first attempted with the M4 bus during rush hours in 1973, then expanded to other routes from there. The usual setup is that limited stop service runs the full route, while local services run only in the limited stop area, and the limited stop buses run local at the tail ends of the route not served by locals similar to the operation of some subway services and the Staten Island Railway. There are also full route limited stop buses, with local variants that make limited stops along the entire route, limited only buses with no local variants under the same route number, and limited zone buses, with a semi limited section with smaller distances between stops than on regular limited routes near the route's tail ends, and a non stop section in the middle. Most limited stop buses flash limited or limited stops on the destination sign. Occasionally, a paper orange and purple limited sign will also be placed at the bottom of the windshield by the bus operator. Dark navy blue local and red express signs also exist. The following MTA regional bus routes run limited stop service for non-Staten Island routes, where there is a route numbering system, bold indicates no corresponding local service on the limited stop route, and italic indicates no corresponding daytime local service on the limited stop route. <laughs> Select bus service Select Bus Service SBS, the brand name for MTA Bus Rapid Transit Service, is a variant of limited stop bus service that requires fare payment to be made before boarding the bus, at fare payment machines in shelters at designated stations. Such a shelter is shown to the right. Receipts given for payment of fare are proof of payment that must be shown to the MTA's fare inspectors upon request. In the event of the fare machine failing to issue a receipt, the bus operator must be notified of the problem. The implementation of this new service is paired with new lane markings and traffic signs that reserve a lane for buses only during the daytime. The first select bus service corridor, on the BX-12 along 207th Street, Fordham Road, and Pelham Parkway, was placed into service on June 29, 2008. 
The next line, the M15, saw select service begin on October 10, 2010 after the delivery of new low-floor buses. The M34, M34A line was started on November 13, 2011. Initially, a 34th Street busway was planned that would require eliminating 34th Street as a through street, but it was dropped in favor of the standard SBS model. The B44 Rogers, Bedford, Nostrand Avenues bus route, the fifth select bus service corridor in the city, was implemented on November 17, 2013 after the arrival of new fare machines. The S79 Highland Boulevard, Richmond Avenue route, initially slated to be converted to SBS in 2013, was moved up to September 2, 2012. The local equivalents of the S79 route are the S78 and S59 buses. A sixth corridor, the second for the Bronx, began service on the BX41 Webster Avenue route on June 30, 2013. This route was the first phase two. SBS route to begin service, the existing corridors plus the B44 comprise Phase 1. Another select bus service route on Webster Avenue, which will be extended to run between LaGuardia Airport and Fordham Plaza alongside the local BX41 route, is proposed for later implementation, a seventh corridor, and the third for Manhattan, the M60 125th Street Tripura Bridge Astoria Boulevard bus route to LaGuardia Airport, was converted to SBS on May 25, 2014. Local service was replaced by other routes running alongside the route of the M60, the M100, M101, BX15, and Q19. An eighth select bus service route was planned in the 2014-2017 financial plan. The eighth select bus service corridor, ninth route overall, and the fourth in Manhattan, was for the M86 running on 86th Street, which was originally scheduled to start running on June 28, 2015, but pushed back to July 13, 2015. It did not include a major change in stops. The ninth corridor, and the second for Brooklyn, is the B46 on Utica Avenue. When implemented, the local and select bus service route of the B46 changed northern terminals to improve reliability. Originally planned for implementation in fall 2015, it was instituted on July 3, 2016. The 10th corridor, and the first for Queens, is the Q44 limited bus route running on East 177th Street the Cross Bronx Expressway Service Road and Main Street, which began on November 29, 2015. Selected stops in the Bronx were combined into much busier stops for faster service, and some stops in Queens have been replaced by the Q20A, B local routes. As both the Q20 branches do not enter the Bronx and the Q44 ran local late nights only, the Q44 gained 24-7 SBS service between the Bronx Zoo and Jamaica. The Q20A replaced the Q44 local in Queens late nights. On September 25, 2016, the 11th corridor, 12th route overall, and the second for Queens, the Q70, was rebranded as the LaGuardia Link and became a SBS route. As opposed to other SBS routes, the Q70 is wrapped in a light blue scheme with clouds and airplanes in order to encourage more people to use public transportation when using the airport. This marked MTA Bus's first SBS route, as well as the second for Queens and the 11th overall. The M23, the 12th Corridor, 13th route, and the 5th in Manhattan, became a select bus service route on November 6, 2016 with dedicated bus lanes and countdown clocks at some stops, replacing M23 local service at the cost of $1.7 million. The M79 became an SBS route on May 21, 2017, with the installation of bus lanes along its route. The BX6, after the completion of bus lanes and widened sidewalks, became an SBS route on September 3, 2017. It supplements the local service by stopping at high ridership stops. This is the third route for the Bronx. Select bus service along Woodhaven and Cross Bay Boulevards was implemented on the Q52 and Q53 routes on November 12, 2017. Select bus service along Kings Highway was implemented on the B82, which replaced the former limited stop route, on October 1, 2018. The city subsequently announced that following the implementation of the B82 SBS, it would halt the implementation of select bus service in the outer boroughs until 2021 as a result of budget cuts, and an upcoming redesign of the city's bus network. A temporary M14 select bus service route was implemented on January 6, 2019, in preparation for the 14th Street Tunnel shutdown. 
Five additional temporary routes will be implemented for the shutdown in April 2019. All current SBS corridors are enforced by cameras restricting non buses in these lanes on weekdays where the bus lane is curbside, with the bus lanes marked by red paint. Where the bus lane is an offset lane, that is, one lane away from the curb, non bus traffic is restricted at all times except for emergencies. Buses used in this service are identifiable with stations equipped with ticket machines, and also have a plus select bus service wrap identifying them as such buses. Locations of stops and in some cases, the local bus stops were shifted or eliminated where possible to prevent mixing of local bus customers. SBS is offered in conjunction with the NYC DOT and NYS DOT. Express service Express bus service is generally geared towards peak hour commuters from the outer boroughs and neighboring suburbs that lack rail or subway services to and from Midtown Manhattan or Lower Manhattan. Some routes also provide significant off-peak service from early morning to late evening, every day. Routes with daily off-peak service include the BXM 1 half, BXM 3, BXM 4, BXM 6, BXM 7, BXM 8, BXM 9, BXM 10, BXM 11, QM 2, QM 4, QM 5 6, SIM 2, SIM 3C, SIM 4C, X27 and X28. The SIM 1C runs 24 hours a day. 45-foot MCI and Prevo over-the-road coaches are used for express service. Service originally began on November 3, 1965, on Route R8X later X8, now SIM5, traveling from the south shore of Staten Island, up Highland Boulevard and Father Capodanno Boulevard, into downtown Brooklyn. In the 1980s, the R8X was renumbered and rerouted from Brooklyn to its current terminal in Lower Manhattan. Access A ride In addition to a 100% accessible bus fleet, New York City Transit also provides paratransit services under the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 under the Access A ride brand, for customers who cannot use regular bus or subway service. It services all five boroughs of New York City at all times. The Access A Ride paratransit services are provided by various independent contractors, using vehicles owned by the MTA. Although all buses are wheelchair accessible, these vehicles provide an accessible transport option for MTA riders. The program was created in 1991 after the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. Topic: <laughs> Bus stops. Within a service area, bus stops are normally located every two to three city blocks apart. Specific guidelines dictate that stops should be placed every 750 feet (230 meters). Buses marked limited stop, select bus service, and express have fewer stops. Stops are located curbside, usually at street intersections, identified by blue signage and shelters. Buses stop either on concrete pads, or designated bus lanes maroon red if painted. Some bus stops, particularly along select bus service routes, are designed as bus bulbs. All bus stops are in effect at all times unless otherwise indicated by signage. Signage <inaudible> 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 Bus stops in New York City are identified by two types of signs. An older style, simple rectangular metal sign, similar to other street signs in the city. A newer, color-coded sign showing both route and destination. In addition, Queens buses that run along the border with Nassau County Q36, Q46, QM6 or within Nassau County Q111, Q113, Q114 will sometimes share former Long Island bus-style signage with Nassau Intercounty Express bus service, though many stops on the Q111, Q113, and Q114 routes in Nassau County are either unsigned or or simply signed as, no stopping bus stop. These signs are also made of metal. 
The newer signs, used on all New York City bus branded routes, were in place by the mid 2000s, while old style bus stop signs still exist on many MTA bus branded routes, showing only the route and not the destination. All bus stop signs within the city borders are maintained by New York City Department of Transportation. The newer signs are made of recyclable ABS plastic that last up to 10 years and are easier to maintain than the old metal signs, which last about 3 years on average. The green plastic pole stands from 12 feet (3.7 meters) to 20 feet (6.1 meters) high, versus the old 6 to 9 foot high (1.8 to 2.7 meters) metal signs. Both old and new style stops carry a guide A ride box that is attached to the center of the pole, providing route maps, schedules and other information. Guide A ride boxes were installed on all NYCT routes by the 1980s. Implementation on MTA bus company routes began in the 2000s for express buses, and in 2012 for local bus routes. All bus stops have schedules as of 2014. Topic. Older signs The first metal signs in the city to feature a pictograph of a bus were installed by the Transit Authority in the 1960s. Metal signs in their current design, which are mainly used on MTA bus-operated routes and at temporary construction regulation bus stops, were first used in 1976, as part of a pilot program on 5th and 6th Avenues in Midtown Manhattan funded by the Urban Mass Transit Administration, and fully implemented in the 1980s. In its current iteration, the upper portion of the sign is read, reading, No Standing, with an arrow identifying the No Standing Zone. Below on a blue background is a white circle, with a blue pictograph of a bus and wheelchair from the international symbol of access. Routes are identified with color-coded labels see below, but without destinations. Some signs for express bus service are colored lime green and read, Express, at the top. <laughs> Topic. Newer signs The modern color-coded lollipop-shaped bus stop signs, which are used at all bus stops on New York City bus-operated routes as well as at bus stops shared with MTA bus routes and other companies, were first installed in November 1996 in Jamaica, Queens. They were designed by W.S. Sign Design Corporation. The signs were created following two federal grants given to the MTA and DOT in 1994 totaling $1.5 million, in response to complaints from bus riders that the previous metal signs lacked basic information about bus routes and schedules, and that some signs were often missing entirely. They were based off signs used in London and Paris that had existed since at least the 1950s. It is important to note that these signs are installed in violation of the New York State Vehicle and Traffic Law, Section 1680, which requires all traffic control devices to comply with the U.S. Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices (MUTCD) as modified by the NYS Supplement. They are a violation because parking signs must be rectangular rather than circular. As a partial result of posting these signs, the federal government is considering denying highway aid money to the city. The new bus stop sign features a large circle on top and rectangular color-coded bus route information on the bottom. The bus stop circle also has a pictograph of a bus and aid a wheelchair, in white on a blue background. Hanging off the pole below are rectangular bus route signs, color-coded by type of service. Each has a route number and final destination, usually the neighborhood in which it terminates, though a street or landmark is listed for some routes. Westbound BX-12 local signs, for example, read, Sedgwick Avenue, instead of the neighborhood University Heights. At the bottom of this area is a white rectangle with black text announcing the name of the stop, usually the names of the streets at the intersection. On bus stops that operate at all times of day, an arrow and red text on the bottom of the upper circle indicates the no standing zone for cars. On stops that only operate part time, the top route number box will read, No standing, with the top destination box listing the days and or times of day this is in effect. Some bus routes that run underneath elevated subway lines such as the BX9 underneath the Broadway elevated in the Bronx use metal bus stop signs with a printed image depicting a modern bus sign, affixed to the pillars of the L. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Electronic countdown clocks. Some bus stops, produced by Data Display and STV Incorporated, feature electronic countdown clocks. In addition to the route and destination, an LED readout in between displays how many stops away or minutes away the next bus is using the MTA's bus time system. The first two signs of this kind, in Stapleton and New Dorp on Staten Island, were installed in 2013. The Stapleton stop is solar powered. A third stop was installed near City Hall in Manhattan in 2015. An additional 18 stops in Staten Island and Brooklyn were approved for installation in late 2014, 10 for Queens in 2015, and 100 in Staten Island in 2016, as part of the NYC DOT's plan to install around 350 across the city. In 2018, as part of its bus action plan, the MTA announced that more signs would receive electronic countdown clocks. Several stops along select bus service routes, such as the B44, B46, M34, M34A, M60, M79, M86, and Q44 employ different countdown clocks that are separate from bus stop signage. These clocks are part of wayfinding information kiosks installed in conjunction with the city's Walknick project beginning in 2013. As of 2016, a total of 32 bus stops had one of the two countdown clocks installed. The current countdown clocks are successes to a pilot program on the M15 in 2007, and another on the M34 and M16 buses between 2009 and 2012. Topic. Sign colors The signage for routes at bus stops may be given different colors depending on the types of services available at each stop. Topic. Shelters The current bus shelters found at many bus stops were designed by Spain based advertising company Simusa, as part of a citywide street furniture project that also included newsstands, bike shelters, and public toilets. Simusa was awarded a 20 year contract for 3,300 bus shelters in May 2006, after the project had been receiving design bids going back to the 1990s. As opposed to the city paying Simusa to install the shelters, the company paid for exclusive rights to advertise on the shelters. In return, the company would share a portion of the ad revenue generated. They replaced the simple old style shelters, consisting of black painted metal with glass. The first 24 shelters were installed by December 2006 in Queens. Designed by British architect Nicholas Grimshaw and his firm Grimshaw Architects, the shelters are constructed of stainless steel, with glass on three sides including the roof and rear. The fourth side consists of an advertising panel. On the non-advertising panel is an insert listing the streets of the intersection where the stop is located on the outer side, and route maps and information also featured on the guide A ride on its inner face. The shelters come in five sizes regular, 5 by 14 feet 1.5 meters times 4.3 meters, narrow, 3.5 by 14 feet 1.1 meters times 4.3 meters, short, 5 by 10 feet 1.5 meters times 3.0 meters, little, 3.5 by 10 feet 1.1 meters times 3.0 meters, and double, 5 by 26 feet 1.5 meters times 7.9 meters. All the modern shelters feature benches many of the old ones did not, and were praised for environmentally friendly construction during their introduction. Several of these shelters, primarily in Manhattan, have since been equipped with LED displays, LCD video advertisement panels, and ad panels with NFC communication technology. Following the acquisition of Simusa by French advertising firm JC Deco in 2015, bus shelters are now maintained by JC Deco. Topic. Late night request a stop Between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Request a stop service is available as dictated by NYC DOT traffic regulations. If requested by a passenger, the bus operator may discharge passengers at a location along the route that is not a bus stop, as long as it is considered safe. If the location is not safe, 
i.e. it will interfere with traffic flow, the bus operator will discharge passengers at the nearest safe location. Request a stop is not available on select bus service, express routes, limited stop routes, or overnight bus shuttles. Request a stop was inaugurated on December 5, 1993 in Staten Island, and expanded to other boroughs in 1994. Topic fleet The fleet consists of over 5,700 buses of various types and models for fixed route service, making MTARBO's fleet the largest public bus fleet in the United States. The MTA also has over 2,000 vans and cabs for Ada Paratransit service, providing service in New York City, southwestern Nassau County, and the city of Yonkers. All vehicles except for paratransit cabs are fully accessible to persons with disabilities. Fixed route buses are dispatched from 28 garages 20 New York City bus and 8 MTA bus and 1 annex in New York City. Several fleet improvements have been introduced over the system's history. The first large order of air-conditioned buses began service in 1966. Kneeling buses were introduced in 1976, and wheelchair lifts began appearing in 1980. Also in the 1980s, stop request cords bell cords were replaced by yellow tape strips. However, buses ordered after 2008 feature cords rather than tape strips due to the latter's higher maintenance cost. Articulated buses were introduced in 1996, and have since become prominent in the Bronx and Manhattan. Low-floor buses, designed to speed boarding and alighting and improve riding conditions for elderly and disabled passengers, were first tested in 1997 and have made up most of the new non-express buses ordered since the early 2000s. Most post-2000 orders also feature stop request buttons located on grab bars. Beginning in 2016, new orders along with buses built after 2011 will be built, retrofitted with Wi-Fi connectivity and USB charging ports. A pilot program is currently ongoing to bring an audio-visual system to the current and future bus fleet. This will include digital information screens installed throughout the interior of the bus which will provide real-time information such as time, weather, advertisements, service advisories and automated announcements that announces next stops and PSAs in an effort to improve customer service and ADA accessibility. These screens are currently being tested under contract from three different vendors and will eventually be expanded to all of the fleet citywide. A new livery was also introduced, replacing the blue stripe livery on a white base that had been in use in one variation or another since the late 1970s. The first of these buses entered service in mid-May 2016 on the Q10 route. Buses operating on clean or alternative fuels also make up a significant portion of the fleet, particularly since the establishment of the MTA's Clean Fuel Bus program in June 2000. Buses running compressed natural gas (CNG) were first tested in the early 1990s and mass ordered beginning in 1999. Hybrid electric buses, operating with a combination of diesel and electric power, were introduced in September 1998, and mass ordered beginning in 2004. Within the current fleet are over 1,600 diesel-electric buses and over 700 buses powered by compressed natural gas, which make up over half of the total fleet. This is the largest fleet of either kind in the United States. Topic. Fares Dollar bills and half-dollar coins are not accepted on fixed-route buses or select bus service payment stations, nor are they accepted on buses of the B-Line bus system in Westchester County or the Nassau Intercounty Express in Nassau County. All fares are in U.S. dollars, and the following fare policy applies to all New York City Transit, MTA bus, NICE, and B-Line except for the BXM4C buses. Up to three children who are five years old or younger get to ride free provided that they are accompanied by a fare-paying rider. Topic. Quality of service Topic. Frequency As of November 2017, three-quarters of bus routes provide high-frequency service in at least one direction during rush hours, with buses arriving at least every 10 minutes. 
Of these routes, 54% provide high-frequency service in both directions, while 21% provide service only in the peak direction toward transit hubs during the morning, and away from these hubs during the evening. One quarter of routes run with headways of more than 10 minutes during rush hours. Of the five boroughs, the Bronx has the greatest proportion of bus routes with high frequencies in both directions, with 65% of routes running such frequencies as of November 2017. Manhattan has the highest ratio of routes with high frequencies in at least one direction, at 85%. On the other hand, more than 60% of routes on Staten Island, the city's least populous borough, ran with low rush hour frequencies, marking the highest such ratio in the city. In roughly 28% of the city's neighborhoods, less than half of routes operate at high frequencies in both directions. Neighborhoods outside of each borough's central business districts, as well as off-peak service, are more likely to be subject to low-frequency bus service, despite significant off-peak demand in areas like Forest Hills, Queens, and Sunset Park, Brooklyn. MTA Bus and New York City Bus also have the U.S.'s highest rates of deadhead runs, or not-in-service runs without passengers, with a respective 19% and 14% of trips being deadheads. Buses running off schedule are also common in the MTA regional bus system, with almost one in four buses running either too early or too late to maintain a constant spacing between buses. This is prevalent even on select bus service bus rapid transit routes, where 20% of bus trips do not adhere to their schedules. Some routes suffer from bus bunching. Routes affected by bus bunching may not have any buses in a certain direction for prolonged periods of time, and then several buses will show up within a short time period. In 2017, nearly 12% of routes were considered to be bunched on a regular basis, compared to 9.4% in 2015. This phenomenon most affects bus routes within Brooklyn Community Board 5 in East Brooklyn, where 15% of buses are subject to bunching. Speed As of 2017, MTA buses on local buses run at average speeds of 7 to 8 miles per hour 11 to 13 kilometers per hour, the slowest of any major bus system nationwide. MTA select bus service routes had marginally faster speeds, averaging 8.7 miles per hour 14.0 kilometers per hour. The average speed varies between boroughs, with Manhattan having the lowest average local bus speed 6 miles per hour 9.7 km per hour and Staten Island having the highest 11 miles per hour 18 km per hour. In 2017, 16 of the 17 bus routes with average speeds of less than 5 miles per hour 8.0 km per hour were located in Manhattan. Conversely, 8 of the 11 routes with average speeds of more than 15 miles per hour, 24 kilometers per hour, were located on Staten Island. On average, buses generally spend a little more than half of the trip, 54%, in motion, while 22% of the trip is spent at bus stops and 21% is spent idling at red lights. The Strap Hangers campaign, another riders advocacy group, gives out Pokey awards to the slowest bus routes of each year. The slowest bus routes are typically crosstown bus routes in Manhattan, with 14 of the slowest bus routes in 2017 being crosstown bus routes. In 2017, the slowest bus route was the M42 crosstown bus on 42nd Street, which had an average speed of 3.9 miles per hour, 6.3 kilometers per hour, approximately a walking pace. This was followed by the M31, M57, M50, and M66 crosstown buses on 57th, 49th, 50th, and 65th, 66th streets respectively, all of which averaged less than 5 miles per hour, 8.0 kilometers per hour. Other winners of the Pokey Award include the M79 on 79th Street and the M23 on 23rd Street, both of which have now been converted to select bus service routes. However, select bus service routes only serve 12% of all bus riders as of 2016, and the average bus route is 10% slower than it was in the mid-1990s. A 2015 study found that 35 MTA routes with significant ridership figures had average speeds of less than 15 miles per hour, 24 kilometers per hour, and that the M66 crosstown bus had an average speed of 3.1 miles per hour, 5.0 kilometers per hour. 
Slow bus rides were not limited to Manhattan routes. The BX2 bus in the Bronx and the B35 bus in Brooklyn both ran at speeds of less than 6 miles per hour, 9.7 kilometers per hour. In 2018, the Riders Advocacy Group Bus Turnaround Campaign rated each bus route based on speed and reliability and gave 75% of city bus routes a D or F grade. As a result of these slow average speeds, MTA Regional Bus Operations has the highest per mile operating cost of all city bus systems in the U.S., with a per mile cost of $30.40. If the operating costs were closer to the U.S. average, MTA buses would have the highest farebox recovery ratio among U.S. cities' bus systems. <laughs> Length and winding routes Many local New York City bus and MTA bus routes take long and winding routes that, in the most extreme cases, take more than two hours to traverse from end to end. Some of the longest routes are in Staten Island, where the average bus line is 10.6 miles .1 long. The longest local bus route in the city, the S78, is 20.8 miles .5 long and spans the entire length of Staten Island. Brooklyn also has several long bus routes, and the borough hosts three of the city's ten longest routes. Some local routes divert into neighborhoods and detour down driveways rather than taking a more direct path. These routes then merge onto heavily congested main corridors. A 2017 report indicated that nearly half of bus routes had at least ten turns along their routes. The most winding route was the BX8 bus in the Bronx, with 29 turns. Starting in 2015, the MTA investigated express bus routes on Staten Island, which were circuitous, duplicative, and infrequent. The MTA proposed replacing all of the existing express bus routes with simpler and shorter variants, a proposal supported by 76% of Staten Island residents who had learned about the study. In March 2018, after hosting several meetings with Staten Island residents, the MTA announced that express bus service to Staten Island was expected to be completely reorganized in August 2018. As part of the redesign, all of the existing bus routes would be discontinued and replaced with 21 new routes with a SIM prefix. Ridership. <inaudible> 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 As of December 2017, MTA bus routes tend to be more heavily used on weekends than on weekdays. Weekday bus ridership in 2017 averaged 1.9 million, while weekend ridership averaged 2.1 million. Express buses had an average weekday ridership of 40,200, while paratransit was used by a mean of 27,900 people each weekday. Bus ridership has steadily declined through the 2000s and 2010s. From 2008 to 2017, bus ridership declined by more than 100 million. Average weekday bus ridership fell 5.7%, and average weekend bus ridership fell 4%, from 2016 to 2017. The greatest ridership decreases were in Manhattan, where bus ridership declined more than 15% from 2011 to 2016. Ridership decreased less dramatically in Brooklyn and parts of Queens and Staten Island, while ridership increased slightly within the Bronx, southwest Brooklyn, central Queens, and most of Staten Island. Bus lines that ran parallel to subway routes also saw ridership declines. As of 2017, there were 13 bus routes with at least 20 stops within 0.1 miles .16 kilometers of a subway station, all saw ridership declines, with each route averaging a 20% loss. <laughs> <laughs> Service improvements Bus lanes To speed up bus service, the city started installing bus lanes in downtown Brooklyn and St. George, Staten Island, in 1963. Another bus lane was soon installed along Hillside Avenue in Queens. In 1969, part of 42nd Street in Midtown Manhattan also received a bus lane. Additional bus lanes were added in the 1970s and 1980s. 
Bus lanes now exist on major corridors in all five boroughs, and are especially prevalent on high-volume and select bus service corridors. There are also bus lanes along several highways that lead to Manhattan. The city's bus lane network is about 104 miles 167 kilometers long as of November 2017, representing nearly 2% of the city's 6,000 miles 9, kilometers of streets. The bus lane rules are enforced by traffic cameras on gantries above the lanes, photos are taken of vehicles who violate the rules, and these motorists are then fined. Bus lanes have generally increased average bus speeds and reduced travel times where they are installed. However, double parked vehicles and other obstructions often force buses within buses to merge out of these lanes. <laughs> <laughs> Bus priority signals As of July 2017, traffic signal preemption is used on five bus corridors in New York City. Traffic signals with bus preemption allow traffic lights to display a green signal for a longer than normal period of time when a bus approaches the intersection. The first corridor to receive traffic signal priority was the Victory Boulevard corridor on Staten Island in 2006, which used infrared detection technology to allow traffic signals to communicate with transponders on buses. Although the system itself was successful, the buses with transponders were reassigned to bus routes in Brooklyn and Queens, rendering the devices useless. Moreover, MTA administrators did not see any cost savings from the program, and employees generally lacked the motivation to maintain the system. In 2008, the Victory Boulevard installation was followed by the Fordham Road and Pelham Parkway Corridor BX12 bus in the Bronx, which used GPS transponders aboard buses. Due to both systems' high cost, they were eventually removed from both corridors. In 2011, Mayor Michael Bloomberg proposed that traffic signal priority be installed along 11 bus routes within the following two years. The MTA started testing signal priority along the M15 in Lower Manhattan in 2012. From 2014 to 2016, five select bus service routes received GPS based traffic signal priority at 260 intersections. They were the M15 in Manhattan, the B44 along Nostrand Avenue in Brooklyn, the S79 along Highland Boulevard on Staten Island, the BX41 along Webster Avenue in the Bronx, and the B46 along Utica Avenue in Brooklyn. The New York City government subsequently studied four of these routes, and found that all of the routes saw increases in average bus speeds along the portions that had bus priority signals. Speeds on these routes increased by an average of 18%. Eleven more corridors were set to receive traffic signal priority by July 2017. The number of equipped intersections rose to 500 by March 2018, and was set to increase further to 1,000 intersections by 2020. However, as of that date, traffic signal priority was still in the testing stages, and preemptive traffic signals in New York City were used in much lower proportions than in other major cities. An expansion of traffic signal priority is planned as part of the bus action plan. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Bus action plan. In April 2018, in response to a citywide transit crisis and complaints about the general quality of MTA bus service, the MTA published a bus action plan detailing 28 suggestions to improve the bus system. Within 12 months, targeted corridor improvements were to be implemented, some bus stops would be removed to speed up service, and off-peak bus service would be expanded on strategic routes. As part of the plan, there will be a system-wide redesign of the bus network by 2021 to improve connectivity and provide more direct service. Expanding bus priority is also part of the plan. Traffic signal priority would be implemented on additional routes, and new bus lanes and queue jump lanes would be instituted. In addition, the MTA would study ways to implement exclusive bus lanes and busways on priority corridors. To ensure that bus lanes are not blocked, dedicated transit priority traffic teams would be put into place with the NYPD in 2019. Tap readers would be installed by the end of 2020, and all door boarding would be installed with the introduction of a new contactless payment system that is planned to replace the MetroCard. 
there would be regular fare enforcement on bus routes to reduce fare evasion. The plan also contained some improvements to bus riders' experience. All buses delivered after April 2018, as well as 1,000 existing buses, would also receive digital information screens with automated announcements. In addition, by the end of 2018, new bus maps would be designed to make it easier to comprehend the bus network and to provide location-specific maps for neighborhoods in each neighborhood. Although the MTA had already started installing bus stop signs with real-time information, the action plan called for more bus shelters to be equipped with these signs. Starting in 2019, the MTA's mobile app would provide real-time seat availability information on selected bus routes. To reduce greenhouse gas emissions and improve air quality, the agency announced its transition to a zero-emissions electric bus fleet. The MTA would also test out a double-decker bus on the redesigned Staten Island bus routes in 2018. Topic. See also Transportation in New York City equals equals notes. <laughs>